and Martin. Martin Fletcher is here, an award-winning journalist who was our colleague for 35 years here at NBC News, first as a cameraman, then a foreign correspondent, finally the network's veteran Tel Aviv bureau chief. His new book is Teachers, The Ones I Can't Forget. He's a prolific author. To honor his work, NBC is teaming up with Christie's Auction House in New York with a special exhibit of photos from the book, capturing some of the most powerful moments of Martin's career. A storied career, Martin. Uh, I was, you know, watching from near and afar all those years and admiring everything you did and learning from you and benefiting from it. And I'm so excited. Congratulations. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's so wonderful to see you again, virtually. I'm going to see you in a couple of days. But you're, you're such a prolific author, but this is a new medium for you. Talk to me about the photography and what you were capturing, which was your original, you know, mission here at NBC. Uh, that's right, Andrea. Yeah, I did begin it. I did join NBC as a cameraman. That did make me, I guess, more... Um give me a different view of how of, of the work that we do and what I wanted to do this time was not write another book although in fact I did in the end but to put together freeze frames from nightly news stories and today show stories and present them to an audience not from the point of view of a reporter you know telling people what's going on but trying to evoke an emotion by 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 digitally editing these images I wanted people to look at the p images as they would a painting you know you, you look at a painting and you're and you, 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 you're moved by that pain. I wanted to move the viewer rather than inform the viewer. I guess that's what I was trying to do here, Andrea. Uh, it, uh, one thing was striking was even in, in Kampala, whom you met in 2008, tell us about her notebook and what did you learn from her? Yeah, well, you know, all of the, all of the pictures in the exhibition are, are of people that, I, that really stayed with me, you know, who I can't forget, I can't get out of my head. And I begin the book and the exhibition with little Evelyn from Kampala, Uganda. So she's eight years old. Uh, her parents both died of AIDS. She's HIV positive. And when I went into her schoolroom, I got hold of a school book, and I, re and I saw under the name of the school, she hadn't written uh, Kampala Junior or something. She'd written School of Struggle. And under the name of the yeah. class, she hadn't written maths or geography or something. She'd written Class of Hope, School of Struggle, Class of Hope. You know, I mean, it just moved me then and it moved me now, even just telling you, frankly. I can't forget her. And I began the book and the exhibition with the story um, of Little Evelyn. And by the way, what she hoped to be, she wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> and, and then there's uh, Wafu, Wafa, Wafa. It's, it's a haunting picture. Um, yeah, she's uh, trying to be a suicide bomber. Exactly. I mean, this is a unique moment in, in photography. This has like never been shown before. This is a suicide bomber at the moment of pulling at the detonator cord, trying to blow herself up. The picture was taken by an Israeli security camera, and she's screaming in frustration and rage because the bomb doesn't go doesn't go off. She's she's got she's wearing the bomb on her body, and it doesn't go off, and she's screaming, and. You know, that when I got to know her story, um, I, what I learned from her, you know, the book is called Teachers, it's about what I learned from these people. Her story was so tragic um, that I learned not, you know, it helped me understand don't prejudge people, you know. I got to know several failed suicide bombers and I got to know their families and I got to know the people who made the bombs and who sent them. And the more you speak to these people, you know, you, you think that you have, can have no sympathy with a suicide bomber. However, I met the some, I got to know them, I got to understand them. And what it made me want to do was tell their story as honestly and fairly as possible, because it's a complicated story. They've all got complicated stories, and my job was to tell their story and try and understand them. And that's what I tried to do with these images in the, ex in the exhibition. I want to evoke emotions in, in the viewer so that you, you, know, you want to know who these mm. people are. That's what I was trying to achieve with the images. And then with the book, um, I ended up telling their stories and, and a lot more, you know, because I was so moved by what they taught me. Um, well, speaking of that, what in your vast experience can you share with us about what's happening in Israel before I let you go? Because the, just the what Netanyahu, I think, accurately described as something that was approaching civil war, but not over the Israeli-Palestinian issue, as, as Richard Engel was saying. It's over, you know, we've, where does Israel go? Richard Haas was saying this morning on Morning Joe that it's partly the influx of so many very conservative and not secular, but religious, deeply religious Russian Jews over generations. 
you you know this you've lived there yeah well you know everyone's trying to understand what's going on i mean I, one of the one of the um, almost jokes that over the decades was that israel was lucky to have the palestinians as an enemy because if they had pe if they made peace with the palestinians the israelis the jews would tear themselves apart so that's what's <laughs> happening now they're tearing themselves apart and they still haven't got peace with the Palestinians. So they're getting the, they're getting the worst of both worlds. It's certainly, as Richard said, this, this, is just, this issue has just been kicked down the road. One thing I'd like to pick up, though, on what Richard Engel just said about, you know, he summed up the opposition in one word, secular. I know he was trying to find one word that, that said it all, but it's not a, this is not a battle between the secular and the religious. That's the wrong way to look at it. The, the demonstrators, there's plenty of religious people among the demonstrators. There's Arabs among the demonstrators. Not so many, but, there are, they're, but they're there in, in, in numbers. This is, a, this is a fight between those people who want to defend democracy. And there are plenty of people on the right, members of Likud, who understand that. So they're demonstrating in the streets too. This is a very complicated situation in Israel. Um, and it's, you know, the conflict is, by, is not over at all. Netanyahu promised his right-wing members of the government right. that he would um, uh, continue with this and make, this, make the laws of changing the ju judicial system happen only in a few weeks. So this, this, is, this is not over by a long way, Andrew. Martin Fletcher. You are invaluable on so many levels. Thank you. The new book is Teachers, the Ones I Can't Forget. Thank you, Andrew. And we'll be seeing you soon. And in honor, 80 years in the making, my interview is with the real-life Rosie